Hi, welcome back to Villefranche-sur-Mer in the south of France. Now, you may have noticed on this vlog over the last few months that I've just occasionally talked about the difficulties of travelling in and out of France right now. Well then a couple of weeks ago I managed to get over to London and I'd begun to think everything was settling down. But in the last 10 days, whole new levels of insanity have been introduced. So in this video, what I'm going to attempt to do is look at these 10 new weird and wonderful new rules. Look at how they might affect you, whether you're American or Canadian trying to get into here, or whether you're a British resident here who wants to get back to the UK. I'm also going to uh, suggest some sneaky workarounds I've discovered that might save you bacon. And I'm going to do this in 10 iconic locations in Villefranche, Beaulieu and saint jean cap ferrat What's not to like? So for the next weird and wonderful new rule I've come to the uh, cafe district of beaulieu sur mer because this next rule involves the pass sanitaire which is the vaccine passport and the fact that children will soon be required to have it. From the end of September, children aged over 12 in France will need a pass sanitaire. The reason for this is that the French have been vaccinating kids over 12 since the beginning of June and by that point they have decided that enough people will have had the vaccination and that they can carry the pass sanitaire. Now that shouldn't be too much of a problem for the French apart from the anti-vaxxers obviously. But this could pose a major problem for British people or American people or Canadians or Australians. Well, Australians, they're not coming. They're not going anywhere. Um, coming here after September the 30th. At the minute, there is no word on how this is going to work, but it is very unlikely that your children in England or America or wherever are going to have been double vaccinated. So uh, it's worth looking at that. Hi. Say hi. I'm just bumped into a subscriber here in Bolesmer. This is Ben. Hello. Hi. Ben from Luxembourg. Greetings. Say hi, Julia. Well, fantastic. And you're heading back to Luxembourg tomorrow. We are sadly after a lovely three weeks down here. It's been amazing. So for my next weird and wonderful new rule, I've come down into the port of Bolia to check out on my super yacht. It's looking all right. I think it could do with a bit of a bit of a wash. Anyway, this is a quick one, but it is also a rule that involves the deadline of the 30th of September. If you are traveling with a French person, if you are married to a French person, if you are going out with a French person uh, and they're traveling to the UK from the 30th of September, it will no longer be enough for them to just present their French ID card. They will need to present a passport. So 30th of September, traveling with a French person, you need to present a passport. So for my next weird and wonderful new rule, I've come to the Palais des Anglais in uh, Beaulieu which is the, uh, the grand palace of the English that again was one of those buildings that went up at around the same time as the Bristol to cater for the, uh, the well-to-do English who came down here. And this next uh, weird and wonderful rule really does involve British people who have come down here and want to go back to the UK. Because if you had Covid before you got any form of vaccination here in France, then you will still have to quarantine when you go back to the UK. You, you may think, what? How can that be? That's not true. Well, the problem is that the French decided that if you had had COVID, you were only to be given one dose of vaccine made complete sense at the time. Their scientists believed that you were still given enough, uh, enough resistance uh, by doing that. And of course it meant that there was more vaccine to go around, etc. But the problem is it means you are only singly vaccinated. And of course to enter the UK without quarantine, you need to be double vaccinated. So how do you get around that? 
how do you get around having to go to Britain and do an eight day quarantine? Well, you would think, and this has happened to Mr. Boo, because that's exactly what happened to him. You would think you could just go to a vaccination centre here and have a second vaccine. But of course, they know that you have only had one and they know you've had COVID, so they will not issue it. There is also another problem in that they will only issue a second vaccine within, I think, four weeks of the first. Now, that's a rule you'd have to check. Um, I came across this problem I say because Mr. Boo is in exactly this situation. He cannot now go back to the UK without quarantine. Um, but I came across this problem in one of the English language Facebook groups down here. Uh, and uh, if you are someone who's managed to get round this, if you've managed to somehow get the French authorities to give you a double vaccination, even though you've had COVID, which is what happened to me, but it was only because my French is so rubbish that when they asked if I'd ever had COVID, I think I said no. And uh, <laughs> the net result was I got double vaccinated. So that was a bonus. So you see, it's not always good to be totally fluent. Um, but this is an absolutely crazy situation to me in that you have a whole cohort of people who cannot go back to Britain without quarantining because they've only had one vaccine and it's a complete uh, one dose of vaccine and it's a complete catch-22 because they can't get the second. Now, have I missed something? Maybe you know a way around this. Please drop me a comment in the links below if you know of a way to get the second vaccine in France, even if you've had COVID. For my next weird and wonderful new rule, I've come to one of the most famous buildings on saint jean cap ferrat This is the David Niven House, the house that was owned by David Niven, the English actor, uh, and his wife Jordis for many, many years. It was their holiday home, and it's where he wrote some of his uh, memoirs, which famously were so, um, well, they were so forthright that his prim English secretary refused to type them up. Well, I think David would have had a thing or two to say about this next rule. And it is a rule that concerns uh, British people, not just British people, but largely British people living in France, wanting to go to Britain. Now, as you know, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I managed to go there. It was all fine. I was double vaccinated, did the two day test, didn't have to quarantine. Everything was fine, um, apart from the cost of the test. Now, uh, subsequently, this has all changed. The rule has now changed that if you are double vaccinated in France, but you are double vaccinated with what they call mixed vaccines. So if you had AstraZeneca to start with and then Pfizer for second course, then you can no longer enter the UK without quarantine. Not hotel quarantine, this is the domestic quarantine. It requires two tests, day two, day eight, or the five day test and release, which is even more expensive. Uh, and obviously the quarantine is deeply disconcerting. This makes absolutely no sense to me, but it's not just Britain who are doing it because France is technically doing it, uh, as so is the EU zone to non-EU countries. So if you're coming into France from an EU country, one of the 26, then you can have mixed vaccines. But if you're coming in with mixed vaccines from another country, then the rules are different. I think you need a test. Uh, and I think you may possibly, and you have to look into this, have to quarantine, but it's, again, it would only be a domestic quarantine and it is self-policed in France. So um, it's a little less stringent than, uh, than the UK system. But the idea that you cannot now travel into Britain with mixed vaccines is crazy. But I think I've discovered a bit of a workaround here because if you look on your vaccination certificate, uh, as I did. It says only one thing on my certificate. It says Pfizer. It says I've had two doses and it says Pfizer. It does not mention that I have any kind of mixed vaccine. Now, will that be enough to get you through at the UK side? I think it will for the simple reason that I do not think any scanner the UK has for a French vaccine passport will have access to the French database. Can't see it. Can't see it happening. But 
<laughs> if you've experienced this, if you have been turned back at the gate, please, please, please drop us a comment below because that's the only way we're going to find out whether my theory uh, it, 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 it works. Um, so please don't take my word for it. Don't, don't do it on a whim. But if you've had mixed vaccines at the minute, that is the only way you can avoid quarantine. That is the rule entering into Britain. Given that one of those vaccines, the AstraZeneca in my case, is British, it seems a bit weird, doesn't it? So for our next weird and wonderful new rule, we've come to the iconic Bristol building here in Bolia sur mer I'm afraid to say the thing they said wouldn't happen, which was that data roaming would be removed by UK carriers for travel in Europe is beginning to happen. I noticed that my EE account this last two weeks had transformed into an account which no longer allows free data roaming. Similarly, I think O2 uh, still has some degree of data roaming, but that calls back to the UK are now charged. So it's a very quick one, this. If you're coming from the UK, check with your carrier before you come. Don't just presume that it's like the old days where you could come and just turn on the phone and, you know, watch my videos for hours on end. Because it may be that it'll cost you money now. Result. So for my next weird and wonderful new rule, I've come down here onto the seafront in Bolio sur mer. Now, Bolio sur mer was popularized, certainly in the summer season, by Americans. And my next weird and wonderful new rule concerns Americans and Canadians. Quite a few Americans and uh, Canadians have been in touch with me and asked the question, but what about the vaccine passport? Well, there is a way around this. Even if you uh, can't scan your American QR code or whatever it is into the uh, French app, you can actually, and I'm going to put the links to this in the description below, there are email addresses you can write to and you can simply uh, get the French authorities to convert your vaccine passport into something that will be accepted in bars, restaurants, etc, etc. Um, while we're on the subject of the vaccine passport, which of course has been hugely controversial, the past sanitaire, the good news is it's working. The vaccine rate uh, is leapt up and in, in, uh, amazingly this week, on Thursday of this week, uh, the French rate exceeded the UK vaccination rate for the first time. So there are now more people vaccinated in France than there are in Britain. And that increase can be almost entirely put down, if you look at the graphs, to the introduction of the vaccine passport. Mr Macron may have been very unpopular in introducing this in many areas, but he knew the French very well. He knew that whilst they didn't like being told what to do, read the vaccine passport, they liked going to restaurants. And when he gave them the choice, they chose restaurants. That said, if <laughs> you come here, you will still see huge queues outside chemist shops for tests because many young people still have not been vaccinated and are still waiting to get the, the, the vaccine or waiting to have their second vaccination. And so they have got no choice but to go to the chemist on a Saturday morning if they want to go out in the evening. Um, but that is another alternative option. If you can't make your vaccine passport work and you're coming from Canada or America, you can just do the test. You can pay 29 euros, you get the result in 15 minutes, they'll print it off for you and you're good to go for the next 72 hours. So if the worst case scenario came to pass and you can't get your vaccine passport together, you can do it simply by testing in any chemist here. 29 euros, 15 minutes, job done. So I was just about to record another uh, weird and wonderful rule when I heard this incredible sound coming out of the church here in Bolia. Let's go check it out. Sounds fantastic. foodstuffs and the weird and wonderful rules around what you can and cannot bring into France. Meat products like bacon, steak, dairy products, unless I think it's baby food, 
can't bring any of that in. That's because Britain, of course, is no longer part of the um, uh, EU, the Schengen Zone. Um, there are, however, some bizarre exceptions. You can bring in fish. So if you want to fill your hand luggage with up to 20 kilograms of fish, as I understand it, please do correct me in the comments below if you've discovered that, you know, when you tried to bring your haddock in, you were stopped at Nice Airport. But as far as I can see, you are allowed to bring in fish. You can also bring in two kilograms of oysters. So if you wish to stink out the EasyJet cabin with some fish and oysters, fill your boots. Um, the other bizarre thing you can still bring in is certain fruit and vegetables. So you can bring in, I think, coconuts. I think you can bring in bananas. And this, well, this is the absolute cracker. You can bring in a durian. Now, <laughs> anybody who has ever traveled in somewhere like Thailand will know that every hotel, every airport, every plane has a big sign up saying durian is banned in this location. The reason is because, well, stinky doesn't do it justice. The other element to this new rule is that you cannot bring in plants. Uh, so you can no longer bring in cuttings or things like that in your hand luggage or in the hold. Now, having said all that, I should just point out two really important things. One is you can still bring your tea bags. I know, that's what was really worrying you. Me too. And two, in 17 or 18 years of passing through Nice Airport, I have yet to be stopped by customs and have my luggage opened. Now, of course, the day that you bring your Sainsbury bacon is the day they choose to do it. So don't blame me if you get caught. But what's the worst that can happen? I guess it's, well, they just take it off you. See, this is the video that tries to save your bacon. So for my next weird and wonderful new rule, I've come to La Reserve de Beaulieu, one of the most fantastic hotels down here on the French Riviera, where the film director, Michael Winner, once spent 45,000 pounds in three weeks. I tell you what, he wouldn't have done if he'd had problems like I've had with the uh, post-Brexit import duties. I got slammed with a 39 quid charge this week from a debt collecting agency because I'd refused to give the money to FedEx because something I bought that was from outside uh, the EU in Britain uh, has incurred a duty. Do I have to pay this? I guess I do. Um, is there a way around it? Well, I think there is, because I received something else from Britain this week that should remain nameless, and they were very clever to uh, label this import as not having value as being a repair. But um, what's your experience? Have you had uh, have you had these new post-Brexit import taxes levied on you? Have you got away with uh, not paying the fines or not paying the fees? Um, let me know in the comments below because I'd, I'd like to save 39 quid. And my next weird and wonderful rule involves World Topless Day. Because I don't know if you knew, but this week was World Topless Day. Now, topless bathing for ladies very popular in France, always has been. Used to be that around 40% of uh, French ladies would, um, would disrobe on the beach. And many, many of the older generation of French ladies still do down here. But apparently, the younger generation are getting a little bit more um, circumspect about it. And in a poll taken this week, a poll, I think it was in the Parisian newspaper, uh, only 19% said they were willing to uh, to get their backs out on the beach. Partly, apparently, it's to do with the Me Too reaction, or it might also be to do with sexual harassment. Apparently, there's an issue sometimes with people filming things, you know, on their cameras. Uh, that obviously, it's not something I'd ever do. Um, but I'm sad about it because uh, I think it's. Yeah, I like to see a. I like to see a lady liberated on the beach. But the good news is that apparently the French love of naturism, lots of nudist beaches along this coastline. Maybe one day I'll do a video about um, the naturist beaches. Um, have a lot of those pixel things, you know, to block out the bits. Um, but the good news is naturism is as popular as ever.
And the final weird and wonderful rule is don't forget to subscribe to the channel and don't forget in the links below you can hit the button that says buy me a coffee and you'll be contributing to the channel and you'll be helping to keep us independent and keep us going because it does cost quite a lot to run. So all support will be greatly appreciated. Have a great week everyone. Speak to you soon. It's goodbye from a rule-ridden south of France.